A close call at a Washington, D.C. airport has prompted investigations from the FAA and the NTSB. An air traffic control recording caught the moment. Take a listen. We stopped. We were cleared to cross runway four. That recording is from yesterday at Washington, D.C.'s Reagan National Airport. A jet blue flight bound for Boston was cleared for takeoff when a Southwest flight bound for Orlando was cleared to cross the same runway around the same time. Now, both planes stopped just 300 feet apart. No one was hurt. Here with me in Studio 57 is CBS News senior transportation correspondent Chris Van Cleve. Uh, Chris, it's great to have you here uh, in person, first of all. But uh, on incidents like this, I think when people hear recordings like that, they wonder, uh, you know, how often does something like that happen that they don't hear about necessarily? Um, how does a, a situation where you have these planes clearly on a collision course get so close um, in an incident like this? And what are the investigations into this actually going to look like now? Sure. You know, I think how did it happen will be the focus of what the FAA is going to look at. It sounds like initially that you had two aircraft given directions by two different controllers uh, that put them in sort of in motion over potentially the same piece of pavement at, at similar times. Um, the Southwest jet never actually entered the runway. So uh, that stop order kicked in fast enough that, you know, you, you have multiple sets of eyes in an air traffic control tower. And, you know, in theory, the pilots are also checking before they cross the same way that like you and I look before we drive into an intersection. Uh, so this is an example of, you know, this system working. Now, there are multiple layers there to to catch a problem. One of the layers caught it and stopped this. They ended up about four city blocks apart. So closer than they should have been. But it it's not like we're talking about inches. All right. Uh, the FAA has also released new policies extending the minimum time off between shifts for air traffic controllers. What sparked that change, Chris, and what problems is the FAA hoping to fix with those changes? One of the biggest complaints with air traffic controllers has been that they are being overworked, um, that there are not enough air traffic controllers. And the FAA has, has, has acknowledged that. They've been aggressively hiring them. They have a plan to hire about 1,800 this year, 2,000 next year. Uh, to, to beef their numbers up. So what they're doing is now saying after they, they had an independent panel look at it, they weren't getting enough rest. There was enough guaranteed rest. You know, like, uh, so it's at least 10 hours off between a normal shift, 12 hours off if you're working the overnight shifts. Um, you know, pilots and flight attendants, there are strict rules as to when their duty day ends. Uh, those that were not necessarily in place the same way for air traffic controllers. 90 days from now, this is going to be a strict policy. All right, Chris Van Cleve, they're telling us we are out of time. Um, but Chris, thank you so much. A lot to cover on your beat all the time. It's busy. <laughs> yes, it's very busy. We appreciate you taking the time to come and visit with us today. Thank you. Absolutely.